Now listen up, you lovely lot. From small screen spin-offs and sequels to already beloved big screen properties perhaps paving the way for more unexpected greatness, to some of cinema's most respected minds once again lending their legendary talents to the world of television. Even after taking in the contents of this very list, you still likely won't be prepared for what the world of TV has in store for you in the not too distant future. Gareth here from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 upcoming TV shows you are not ready for. Number 10, Gangs of New York. In the last year alone, iconic filmmaker Martin Scorsese has been overseeing the long-awaited Hulu TV adaptation of The Devil in the White City. With that planned show taking another hit recently with the dropping out of both Keanu Reeves and Todd Field, as leading figure Daniel H. Burnham and series director, respectively. But while that particular adaptation appears to be experiencing a bit of turbulence at this current moment in time, Scorsese fanatics will no doubt be pleased to hear that the legendary presence behind the camera is also helping to kick off a Gangs of New York series in the coming years too. Hooray! According to recent reports, Scorsese will once again be aiming to get a gang show off the ground after his 2013 attempt to do so. This time, teaming with Miramax Television to help create a new high-profile spin on Herbert Asbury's 1927 titular novel. Along with executive producing, Marty will also be on hand to direct the first two episodes, penned by writer Brett Leonard. That will supposedly focus on characters that weren't present in Scorsese's Oscar-nominated 2002 big-screen adaptation. Just when you thought it was safe to head back onto the streets, eh? Number 9. Daredevil Born Again if the sight of Charlie Cox rocking up in many an MCU project of late, and Vincent D'Onofrio heading back into the Marvel Universe as Wilson Fisk in Hawkeye towards the back end of last year wasn't enough to get you giddy about the concept of Daredevil finally returning to the small screen, then, well, what more do you want? Well, maybe the news of this much-wanted return of Cox's Matt Murdock reportedly being set for a whopping 11 months of shooting from 2023 onwards will be enough to convince you that a truly epic 18 episodes of hopefully gritty crime-fighting brilliance will be heading your way by 2024. That and the fact the show is said to be shooting on location in New York, without a volume or LED stage in sight perhaps, bodes well for Murdoch's solo series return. With a noticeably authentic feeling Hell's Kitchen no doubt helping ground a story that could see the MCU finally step into far more mature territory on the small screen. And there's every chance Cox and D'Onofrio's presence in the upcoming Echo series could add a few more intriguing elements to this already compelling production too. Number 8, June the Sisterhood. Before the unquestionable success that Denise Villeneuve's staggering June experience last year, HBO was so confident in the content that the director and his team were cooking up that they greenlit a spin-off centered around the origin of June's powerful sisterhood, the Bene Gesserit. And while not much had been made official in regards to who would be appearing in the planned HBO show, or what it would specifically entail since that 2019 announcement, April brought with it the news of Chernobyl director Johan Renk signing on to direct the first two episodes, with the fantastic Emily Watson and Shirley Henderson also agreeing in October to appear as the leading sisters of Valia and Tula Harkonnen respectively. Bringing in that level of talent was one thing, but news of the story reportedly being set 10,000 years before the rise of Paul Atreides, as the Harkonnens combat forces that threatened the future of humankind and established the fabled sect known as the Bene Gesserit, seems to all but guarantee fans are in for one hell of a HBO Max tale soon enough. Number 7, Masters of the Air. Martin Scorsese isn't the only all-timer filmmaker with something rather epic up his small screen sleeve in the not-too-distant future. After absolutely knocking it out of the park with his other stellar executive producer wartime team-ups with Tom Hanks, in the form of Band of Brothers and the Pacific, Steven Spielberg will once again unleash another chunk of gripping World War II action onto Apple TV Plus before long. This new show is set to tell the tale of an American bomber squadron in World War II who brought the war to Hitler's doorstep based on Donald L. Miller's book, Masters of the Air. 
America's bomber boys who fought the air war against Nazi Germany. No, that was probably a bit too much of a mouthful, so they just went for masses of the air. It also comes equipped with a ridiculously gifted cast, with the likes of Austin Butler, Callum Turner, Barry Keegan, and Chuty Gatwa all making their presence known in the hotly anticipated incoming series. However, news of one of the show's directors, No Time to Die Helma Kari Joji Fukunaga, recently being accused of sexual harassment may have led to Apple holding off on an official announcement as to when the project he's heavily involved with will drop for now. But away from that rather unsettling controversy, Masters of the Air, when it does ultimately arrive, looks set to become yet another star-studded dive into the harsh reality of the Second World War. Number 6, Ahsoka from the moment Rosario Dawson's live-action version of longtime Star Wars favourite Ahsoka Tano rocked up in Disney Plus's The Mandalorian series, fans were bracing themselves for the potential of the dual-bladed hero perhaps being given her own solo series treatment. Well, they didn't have to wait too long for the announcement. With Disney Plus quickly capitalising on the reaction to her stunning live-action debut, and setting the ball rolling on a 2023 Ahsoka TV tale. Tano has, of course, rocked up again on the small screen recently in the Book of Boba Fett series in satisfying cameo form. But Star Wars mastermind and Ahsoka writer, director, producer Dave Filoni's comments on the writing process on his Tano passion project being thrilling, his classing of the watching of an already edited episode as a religious experience, and Tano seemingly still being on a mission to hunt down Rebels Big Bad Grand Admiral Thrawn, based on her live-action antics, all feel like promising signs that this former Jedi's upcoming solo story is definitely in the right hands and shaping up to be something pretty special. Oh, and the live-action reported casting of Ezra Bridger and Sabine Wren, played by M&S Fundy and Natasha Lou Bordizo, respectively, is simply the icing on top of an already captivating cake. Number 5, The Penguin it's some feat being arguably the name on just about every Bat fan's lips, heading out of a three-hour monster of a Dark Knight movie boasting powerhouses such as Robert Pattinson, Andy Serkis, Paul Dano, Jeffrey Wright and Zoe Bloody Kravitz. But that's precisely what the chameleonic Colin Farrell was able to pull off on the back of his simply mesmerising turn in The Batman as the latest iteration of Oswald Cobblepot aka The Penguin or whatever Benedict Cumberbatch calls them. And Matt Reeves was seemingly all too aware of just how captivating one of his feature antagonists would prove to be before his recent dive into Gotham even arrived on the big screen. With the Batman's director developing a Penguin HBO Max spin-off as executive producer back in September 2021, before the Farrell starring show was officially ordered in March. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Lauren LeFranc is on board to write and as showrunner for the series, with the first of what looks like a wave of new Reeves-guided Gotham tales on the big and small screen reportedly taking place after the events of the Batman. And with Farrell himself noting how the show will showcase Cobblepot as he rises through the darkened ranks to become the Penguin, along with the star gearing up for a little madness and a little mayhem as he put it, it's safe to assume this bird's return will be explosive to say the least. Number 4. Secret Invasion Bringing together more acting powerhouses on the small screen than ever before in the MCU, the likes of Samuel L. Jackson's Nick Fury, Ben Mendelsohn's Talos, Colby Smulders' Maria Hill, Amelia Clark's reported Abigail Brand, Olivia Colman's Sonia Falsworth, Kingsley Ben Adir's Gravik, Martin Freeman's Everett K. Ross, and Don Cheadle's James Rhodey Rhodes will all be navigating a twisting and turning spy thriller landscape containing more shape shifting aliens than anyone is likely ready for. I know I'm not. From the minute this one gets underway, given the compelling source material, there's a solid chance just about any person, or super person for that matter, seen occupying the screen may not actually be who they claim to be, given the scroll's penchant for convincing transformation. So buckle up for jaw-dropping revelations aplenty, some of which could alter the way Earth's corner of this sprawling universe operates forever. And maybe even some of the MCU's long-running heroes, such as Fury, Rhodes, or Hill, finally showing their true colours in more ways than one, before this six-part epic reaches its end next year. Number 3, Doctor Who 60th Anniversary Special The recent reveal of David Tennant once again regenerating into the latest incarnation of the Doctor was enough to leave every Whovian on the planet punching the air with glee. In a move that seems poised to fire the series into its most exciting territory in years, Tennant's 14th Doctor taking over from the departing Jodie Whittaker will make his return proper in November 2023. But this three-part special definitely looks like it'll be worth the wait and then some. 
with Catherine Tate also reprising her role of companion Donna Noble as the Scot becomes the first ever actor to play multiple incarnations of the Doc. Yeah, that's because Tennant isn't simply returning as his previous 10th version of the leading icon. As BBC themselves reported, this is very much a new iteration of the Doctor. And if that wasn't enough to leave fans wishing they could jump in a TARDIS and skip forward a year right this very second, the quick teaser of said upcoming 60th anniversary three-part special, released after Tenant's reveal, also showcased the arrival of Neil Patrick Harris's particularly villainous-looking character and the first line from the incoming 15th Doctor, Chuti Gatwa. Now that is one way to hook your audience, I suppose. Number 2. Sausage Party Foodtopia there's no denying the fact that Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg's raunchy animated Sausage Party, directed by Conrad Vernon and Greg Tiernan, did some serious numbers at the box office on a $90 million budget. And that $140 million haul no doubt influenced Amazon's decision to order a television series sequel of the Rogen starring Foul Mouth Food Festival. With the streaming titan clearly seeing the value in bringing back the original cast, including the likes of Kristen Wiig, Michael Cera, David Krumholtz, and Edward Norton for another round of provocative madness too. Joining the OG hot dogs, buns, and bagels this time around are incoming delights Will Forte, Natasha Rothwell, Sam Richardson, and Yasir Lester, with a sequel show set to boast eight episodes for those fond of a late-night binge. And as executive producers Goldberg and Rogan would note upon agreeing to the upcoming chaos that will be Sausage Party Foodtopia, it's got all the hearts, double the puns, and triple the food on food sex. In other words, it's exactly what the world needs right now. Sounds tasty. Number one, The Gentleman Sequel. Sitting as one of Guy Ritchie's latest slices of gangster-stuffed hilarity, The Gentleman proved to be quite a hit at the box office upon making its 2019 debut, before going on to become a frequently streamed treasure in the years that would follow the debut of Hugh Grant's scene-stealing Fletcher, among other notable showings. But instead of reuniting the star-studded cast scene chewing scenery throughout for a big screen sequel, Miramax felt there was more potential in bringing the project full circle in a way. The Gentleman actually started out as a TV concept that was later adapted into a full-blown feature, don't you know? And on top of finally giving this world the small screen treatment, the show has been decked out with a brand new cast too. Replacing the likes of Matthew McConaughey and Charlie Hunnam for the soon-to-be Netflix release are the likes of Theo James in a leading role, with Kea Scordelario, Giancarlo Esposito and Vinnie Jones along with many other talented folks, also no doubt pressing their best suits and loading their handguns for the latest chunk of Gentleman Wise Kraken. Richie has also co-written the pilot with Matthew Reed, will be executive producing and directing the first two episodes for good measure. And with this tale set to go down in the same world that still boasts the aforementioned memorable big screen lunatics, perhaps there'll be room for the odd scene stealing cameo too. We can only dream, eh? And that's our list. Know of any other upcoming TV shows you are not ready for? Let us know all about them in the comments section right down below. And do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, be sure to head on over to whatculture.com and find some more incredible articles just like the one this video you're watching right this second is based on. Now, I've been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you, as always, for clicking on this fantastic video today. Hopefully, I'll see you very, very soon. But in the meantime, just be good to yourself. Bye-bye.